Uh, my name is Ricky Nelson, 34. How I got involved is uh, when I was 13, I didn't even know I was uh, I had fetal alcohol till I was 13 years old. I am very, very heavy w exposed to alcohol. My birth mom uh, actually drunk, drank a quart of vodka and a six pack a day, every day, and did that to smoke. So I'm very, very heavily exposed. I don't look it. A lot of people say, ah, oh, he can get a job. He can do that. No, I, I can't really get a job. Don't get drinking while you're pregnant or your child is going to end up being not perfect, you know, because uh, me, I have challenges in my life. I have to be supervised and I need services to keep me safe if I'm not uh, supervised, I make bad choices. If I'm on the same schedule every day, the same schedule and the same routine, I do very well. If I'm, if I come back the next day, I'm not on the same schedule, then I have problems. I can read about a, a third level and I'm not really good at uh, writing. I can't spell things. And I, can, I can spell some things. I can write some things, but I have to ask for help sometimes. People don't understand what they're dealing with and don't even care. And one just say, oh, right, get out of here. We want somebody that's going to listen and be interested. No, not with us. Because we, as uh, disabilities, like mine was caused by fetal alcohol, I'm going to be drunk. When I go around and say, you know, I'm going to be drunk the rest of my life. I'm actually drunk every day, every hour. But I did ask one of the doctors, I brought up asking them, can I, um, I would like to get a new brain. And they told me, you know, that's a good topic, you know, to bring, bring up, but the thing about a brain, if I switch brains, you won't be perfect. You won't be at what you want to be. You know, you won't be your uh, normal anymore. You won't even be yourself. I want to drive, but I can't because it's dangerous for me. Because what happens is, by drive, I might want to go my speed limit, and that would be not appropriate for the rest of the people, and I. We'll get in trouble with that. I was driving along uh, in a car with my mom, and I happened to see a stray dog. I wanted to get lucky. My mom caught me by the string of my thing because I was about, I opened the door, swing the door open, and I was about to go in the four lanes of the freeway. And my mom grabbed me just barely by the tip of her hands or else I would have maybe got hit or something. That's the type of guy thing that I like to do. I don't think I just do it. I don't want to be dragged going with places with my mom, you know. I want to be more independent staying home. But it's not a seizure. It's not a seizure tick. It's not something I decide to do it. It just random comes. Don't know when it's gonna uh, me to go out and do something instructive with somebody. I just do it. One time I uh, saw some kids playing hockey and, uh, and I was like, I'm 6'4". I decided to get my hockey stick out too. And before going to them, I decided to take, take the hockey stick, pointed it, pointed it actually a different way towards these other homes. Next thing I noticed, uh, I, I didn't notice uh, the fact till I went back in the house, I had eight cop guy at cars showed up at my car with the guns drawn because I took that hockey stick and pointed it like a gun and a lot of the neighbors saw that immediately called the police and imagine if I would have walked out not calm or never just silly and walking out there I would have been shot a lot of times in my life I used to do things and not fess to it and then when someone comes to me and and tells me what I did, I have a tendency to laugh. Just tendency to laugh about it and not feel sympathetic, just totally laugh about it and, and all that. But if I have somebody with me saying, okay, Ricky, yes, you feel like doing that right now. Okay, now if you do that, you're gonna pay the consequences. 
do you really want to do that? If this is a thousand dollar thing, you break this, that, that you can go to many, many concerts or, or you can buy something with that. And instead you spend your money on this instead of this. This is a true story. Uh, we were going to our bank. My mom forgot the deposit slips like they always have. So my mom asked me to go out and get one because she didn't have any in the car. So I go out and go into the bank. Of course, I don't go inside the bank. The bank's open and closed. And, but I am keep on knocking on the door because I see people in there. And the lady's waving, go away, go away. I am keep on knocking on it. They kept on saying the same thing, go away. Funny, I must have did it too many times. Irritated the person, she came out and said to me, Sir, can you leave, please? You are, we are closed for the day. Leave. And I went back to my mom and said, Mom, that lady was rude, rude to me and all that. No, the bank was not closed. They had people in there and all that. But my mom said, Okay, what was everyone doing? Actually, people were in the bank with their hands on the head, on the floor. And my mom asked me two seconds. It didn't kick in my head, but it did. My mom asked me, do you know what they were being? I said, two seconds, Donna, I said, yeah, they were being robbed. They were being robbed, but my, uh, my, my mind thinks like she wanted that deposit. Only one thing I was going for is that deposit slip. Didn't was not thinking about anything else, except that. And and of course, if someone would have said, "Sir, come in," I might have been the one that said, "Yeah, okay, I'll come in." And that wouldn't have been safe either. I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ. I'm a real good DJ. I uh, I I can keep the music going, and all that. I love being a DJ. I love music. Uh, my, uh, I also love concerts, you know, I endure concerts a lot, you know, that's half the time when I get money for my DJ job, I spend it on concert tickets, and a lot of times I'll try to find the people who are running the concerts to talk to them a little bit about my disabilities, and then the next thing I know is they let me go back there, backstage, and talk to the performers. Also, I'm always learning how to be a better DJ by when I go to these other events, uh, like clubs or whatever, mostly I don't go dancing. I just like to go near the DJ and just mellow right there and watch what he does and can take a little bit back what I can do and sometimes talk to the DJs and say, you know, I I do this stuff too. It, I'm always asking the other DJs, could I be more or help? Can you be a help to me, like a mentor? like?" Say I could be your roadie, for example. I need to learn. I want to learn more, and I'm not out there at competition. I'm just love what I do, you know, and love music. And someday, I don't know if I'll get married or not. Someday or not, because I always have to be in someone's home, regardless if I get married, being supervised.